So what we're going to have is just a couple quick examples we're going to go through. Let's take a look at the point 3 comma negative 4 and the point uh, 3 comma negative 2. And we want to calculate the slope of the line. That's all we're going to do. Now, normally I'll say something like uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's what you're taught in your book. That's what I've been doing in the last lesson. But as you get higher in math, we shorten things a little bit, so I want to introduce you to that. When you have y2 minus y1, a lot of times you'll see that written as this triangle. We call it delta y. It's a Greek letter delta, and it just means change. So if you see the word or the, the letter delta here, the Greek letter delta, you just in your mind you replace it with the word change. So if you read it like that, it says change in y, right? And we're going to divide this by change in x. And this I really like because this is a great equation. It tells you what to do, but this is very descriptive. It's telling you that we're taking the change in y, however much that is, that's the rise, and we're dividing it by the change in x between two points, which is what we call the run. It's compact and it doesn't clutter your paper, but it also doesn't hide anything. Because what it's telling you is I need to subtract the values of y to get the change in y, and then I'll subtract the values of x to get the change in x. So I'll do that on the next line right here. The slope then will equal to the change in y. And I can go any way I want as long as I go the same way. So I'll do, go negative 2 minus a negative 4. Negative 2 minus negative 4. Always wrap it in, in your parentheses so you don't make a simple mistake. But since I went this way, I have to go this way again. 3 minus 3. Minus 3. Now you probably can already see there's going to be a problem because what you're going to have is this will be negative 2 plus 4 over, what is this, 0. So what I'm going to have is negative 2 plus 4 is going to give you 2 over 0. Now what do you have when you take 2 and divide it by 0 in your calculator? As I mentioned before in the last section, it's going to give you an error. If you put it in a computer, it's going to give you an error. Because I can take 2 and divide it by 1, that's a number. I can take 2 and divide it by 0 0.01, that's a number. I can take 2 and divide it by 0 0.00001, that's a big, big number. And I can take 2 and I can divide it by 0 0.00000000000001, and that's a really big number. So in the limit, when you do that with smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller values of the bottom number, the slope gets bigger, 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 until eventually we say it, it's undefined, but really we say as a concept it's infinity. It's infinitely big. Because if you could divide by zero, it would be an infinitely big number that would never, never stop. Okay? So what, what do you write on your test when you see this? Your teacher is probably going to want you to say that it has an undefined slope. But I'm teaching you, because when you get into later classes like calculus, that usually you consider the slope to be in your mind, uh, I'm going to put a quotation mark, infinity, which means it's infinitely big, but it's not a real number, so we still say it's undefined, right? And in your mind, you should also know that when you have an infinite slope like this, what it really means is you have a vertical line. A vertical line. How do you know it's a vertical line? Well, because we already talked about in the last section that, that the slope of a flat line is zero, and the slope gets steeper, 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 steeper as I rotate, but then when I get to straight up and down, I have an infinitely high slope. So anytime you calculate a slope that looks like infinity or undefined, you should know it's a vertical line, and you probably should spell the word line correctly too. Now, how do we prove it to ourselves? Let's plot these points. 3 comma negative 4. 3 comma negative 1, 2, 3, 4. That's right here. And the other point was 3 comma negative 2. 1, 2, 3 comma negative 2. What do you have here? Just as you would suspect, uh, you have a vertical line. So we're going to go ahead and just kind of make it all official and say here we have a vertical line there. It goes straight up and down. So any slope of a vertical line is going to give you, uh, you can consider it to be infinity or you circle on your test that it's undefined because you can't get a real number out of it. Either way you want to write it's fine with me. But I really want you to know that when you have something like that, it's really a vertical line, straight up and down, right? And you can also see that in the points, because anytime you have a, a, a line where both points on the line have the same value of x, 3 in this case, then you know right away it's got to be vertical, because the only way that can happen is if the points were right on top of each other like this. All right. So you see what I'm saying? We're doing the same thing we did last time, but we're just getting into some interesting cases that I want to bring up to you. Now I want to talk about what happens when you have a point like this, 3 halves uh, and negative 3, and then another point. Uh, we're going to call that 1 half negative 7. 
This calculation to find the slope with these points is exactly the same as the other ones, but the problem is you have fractions, and when you have fractions, a lot of people go crazy and they don't have any idea how to handle it. So let's take it one step at a time and make sure you understand how to handle it when you have fractions in your points. So the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, but like I told you, I'm gonna start probably writing it half the time as delta y over delta x, which means change in y values divide by change in x values. And I don't care which way you subtract the y values as long as you're consistent. So let's do it this way, negative seven minus this value of y, negative three, so we're gonna wrap it in parentheses so we don't mess that up later. And then since we went that way, we'll do this uh, one half minus the three halves. All right, now what am I gonna get on the top? I'm gonna to get, just to make it clear, negative seven plus three. And on the bottom, what am I gonna have? Well, it's one half minus three halves. In this case, it's actually really easy because I have a common denominator already. So what I'm gonna have is a fraction on the bottom. Make this line longer. I'm gonna have a fraction on the bottom with a denominator of two because it's already a common denominator. But then I'm gonna have one minus three for the numerator. One minus three is negative two. So what I have is, the numerator and then in the denominator is a, is a fraction which itself I'm going to simplify in the next uh, step. So for the numerator, I'm going to have, what is negative seven plus three? It's negative four. And the denominator, if I divide these, what do I get? I get negative one, right? And so I can then divide those out and I can say the slope is equal to uh, positive four because negative divided by negative is positive. So this is the slope of the line. If the, if the question was calculate the slope of the line for these points, this is what you would write. Right, um, But also I'm trying to squeeze more and more learning out of it. When you have a whole number slope like this, what it really means is four over one, which means rise over run, which also means because it's a positive slope, which way is this line gonna point? I don't really care about plotting this particular line, so I'm just gonna sketch it here. This line looks like something that slants like this. In other words, positive slopes go this way, negative slopes go this way. Right? And I didn't draw the line correctly, but what it means is I go up four units, one, two, three, four, and I go over one to get to another point on my line, up two, two, three, four. So it's really much steeper than I've drawn it here. This line, actually, if I was really gonna draw, it's probably more like this, right? So you go up four units, over one, up four units, over one, like this, all right? And we'll plot some along the way, but uh, you know, I don't care about plotting every, every single one because I don't think we need to. All right, next problem. What if I had a, uh, two points and I wanted to find the slope between the point six comma negative five and negative four comma three. So I have two points there and I want to um, find the slope between them. So same sort of thing, I'm gonna basically say that it's gonna be delta y over delta x, which means y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Right, but I have some freedom. I can go whichever way I'd like to do my subtraction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do it the same way. Usually I do it the same way over and over again. I take three minus the negative five, three minus the negative five, and then I have to go the same way, negative four minus six, negative four minus six. On the top, this becomes three plus five, which becomes eight. On the bottom, it becomes negative four minus six, which is negative 10, which you can, you know, that you can simplify this by dividing by uh, two. Two times four is eight and two times five is 10. So the answer is negative four fifths. So I'm not gonna plot it because I don't wanna plot every one of them, but what is this line gonna generally look like? It's gonna have a slope that's negative. So that means that we know that it doesn't slope this way, it has to slope the other way. And also, the actual magnitude is just a little bit less than one, right? A little bit less than one. So it's not a really high slope, it's pretty shallow. So this slope is gonna look something kinda like probably like that, something like that. Not too steep, not too shallow, uh, and point it in the negative direction. That's the final answer. The answer is the slope is negative four fifths. And if I were gonna, uh, if I knew a point on this line and I wanted to find another point on the line, all I'd have to do is rise down four units, one, two, three, four, and then to go over five units, one, two, three, four, five, to find another down four over five because I'm rising down because I have a negative slope there. All right, we have one more, no, actually we have two more, which are both very important, so I wanna make sure you see them. Uh, what if I have the points three comma four and seven comma four? Two points, and I wanna figure out what is the slope of this line. So the slope is delta y, delta x. 
y2 minus y1, and so on and so forth. So I have 4 for this y minus 4 for this y. You say, uh-oh, that's a problem, and you'll be right. But I got to go the same way, 7 minus the 3 over here. What do I get on the top? I get 0. What do I get on the bottom? I get 4. 0 divided by a number is not really a problem because you get an answer of zero for that. It's only a real problem when you get a zero on the bottom. Then you get an infinite or an undefined answer like we talked about. But when the zero is on the top, zero divided by four, zero divided by two, zero divided by 10, zero divided by negative five is all the same thing, it's just zero. So you get zero for your slope. And we talked about before, what does it look like when the slope is zero? The slope is zero should be a completely flat line. Flat line, horizontal line. And we talked about that in the last lesson. So this is one of the ones I do want to plot. 3 comma 4 means x is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, means I have a point right here, 3 comma 4. And then 7 comma 4, here's 5, 6, 7 comma 1, 2, 3, 4, which means like this. And you can already kind of see what's happening here. I have two points that have the same exact value for, for y like this. So when I plot them, I'm going to get a horizontal line, which is exactly what my slope predicted that I would have. Uh, because it's calculating the actual slope that you get uh, here. So this m is equal to 0. And for this one here, uh, I'm going to say m is equal to infinity, even though some teachers in books will probably just tell you that the slope is undefined for the vertical line. All right, one more, and we'll call it a day. Uh, this one's not hard at all. What if I have, but it's interesting though, 1 comma 1 is a point, and the other point is uh, 3 comma 3. All right, so what do I have there? Easy enough, just got some numbers. So the slope is going to be delta y over delta x. So I subtract the y values, 3 minus 1. I subtract the x values, 3 minus 1. All right, on the top I get a 2. On the bottom I get a 2. So I divide those, I get a 1. So the slope is equal to 1. So it's a positive number, which means it should slant up and to the right like that, okay? And its value is not super, super high. It's not super, super low. It's actually a kind of a perfect middle value of 1. But what does it really mean to have a slope of 1? What it means is if you write this as a fraction, it's 1 over 1, which means the rise is equal to 1 and the run is also equal to 1. So the reason I'm choosing this example is because it's that perfect situation where you're rising up the exact number of units that you're going over. So if you're going up the same number of units as you're going over, what is your line going to look like? It's going to look like a totally perfect diagonal 45 degree line, uh, which is what you're going to get. So let's go ahead and plot these points. 1 comma 1, 3 comma 3. 1 comma 1 is right here. 3 comma 3 is right actually here. And so if I'm going to draw a line through that, you can see what's going to happen. If I can do it properly. this slope is equal to 1. So, I've been saving this for the end because I don't want to confuse you, but when you have a line that's perfectly diagonal, notice that if you could get a protractor and measure it, it'd be 45 degrees, because this is 90 degrees between these, these black lines, 45 line, degrees, 45 degrees, then it, a perfect slope that goes at that angle is going to be uh, rising one unit for every run of one unit over, meaning that it's just going to be perfectly in the middle there, 45 degrees. So rise one over one, rise one, run, rise, run, rise one. You see how you can just keep on going up and up and over? So a perfect middle of the road slope at a perfect 45 degree angle like this is going to be a positive one. A perfect slope going the other direction at a 45 degree angle is going to be negative one. You could probably guess that. And then a slope of a horizontal line is zero, and a slope of a vertical line is in infinity, or you can call it undefined, whatever you prefer. I tend to say that it's infinity, um, because I know that when you get down the road into calculus, you're going to start talking a little bit more about infinities. But for now, you can just put undefined if you like. Now, it's really important to, con to understand this concept of slope, so make sure you can calculate all of these yourself and that you really do understand the difference between them. Because very, very soon, we're going to be talking about different ways to write the equations of lines. We've already talked about standard form, but there are other ways to write the same sorts of equations. And one of the most important things you have to know to write those equations is, what do you think? The slope of the line. So that's why we did this first, because we're going to need it to write these other types of equations later on. So follow me on to the next lesson, and we'll start to tackle this right now. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.